Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a pretty highly requested makeup video of how I do my makeup when I have to wear a mask. As we all know now that we have to wear a mask every single time we go out, um, not only because we want to keep ourselves safe, we also want to keep everybody safe. A lot of the times whenever we wear a mask, you know, we have this entire part of our face covered. The mask actually hugs our face and our skin really really closely and tightly, so much so that our makeup will always smudge underneath. So today I'm going to show you guys some of the tips and tricks and also a simple makeup tutorial that I have for you guys. Hopefully it will give you guys some inspiration whenever you're heading out and whenever you have to wear a mask. So let's begin. Of course when it comes to skincare, I would say avoid things that will make you dewy and shiny. No matter what makeup products you apply on top of it, it might smudge and shift around um, underneath your surgical face mask. After you apply your skincare, after you apply your base makeup, where you touch your face is not supposed to leave you with any fingerprint marks. So that is usually the test that I do because once it leaves a fingerprint mark, it also means that it's gonna be all on this. When it comes to makeup smudging, it's really not that big of a deal. When it comes to like meal times or anything, then you have to remove your mask and that's when you don't really want to see like cakey or smudgy makeup underneath. Maybe I should share with you guys some of the skincare products that I use separately in another video, but if you guys are interested to find out more about that kind of things, um, let me know in the comments box down below so I'll film it for y'all. But today, let's focus on makeup. So starting with the base, I think the base is the most important Thing, and I'm sure something that you guys are most concerned about. I recently did a video on how to cover pores. I talked a lot about creating a flawless base. I am going to be using a lot of the similar techniques that I talked about in that video. So if you haven't checked that out, please go and check it out. I'm going to leave it over here and also in the description box below. So for foundation recommendations, I've got five over here for you guys to choose from. But generally, we're talking about finishes that are matte, medium to full coverage that do not slip and slide easily. So the keywords we are looking for would be matte, poreless, long-lasting. So we have here the Urban Decay Naked Weightless Foundation. This is one of the most full coverage and long wearing foundations that I own. We also have the Burberry Matte Glow Foundation. So this one is, as its name suggests, it is a matte finish, but it still gives you a slight glow. But both of them are really long lasting as well. In the drugstore and in our road shops, we have Etudes Double Lasting Foundation. So this one um, is pretty close to, I would say, the Urban Decay one, except for this one feeling a little bit heavier on the skin. And this one is also a little bit more full coverage. But I also feel like it lasts less long compared to the Urban Decay one. This is my favorite face shop, Ink Lasting Cushion. Um, I really like both the foundation version as well as the cushion version. Essentially, they are the same thing because they have the same formula inside. Extremely long lasting, but it does give you a slightly dewy finish so you do have to keep setting with powder. Last but not least the Maybelline Matte and Polis Fit Me foundation is also a good option if you're looking for something that is matte polis but when it comes to long lastingness I still feel that the face shop ink lasting as well as Urban Decay and Burberry are better. So today we're gonna go in with the Urban Decay Stay Naked Weightless Liquid Foundation. This is one trick that I always like to do. I like to first dust a layer of loose powder all over my face to make sure that my skin is matte. I don't want to put too much because it will make my foundation cakey, so I'm just dusting it with a loose powder, something as light as possible. So right now, I've been loving the Givenchy Prism Liber Loose Powder. So this one has four colors. This is shade number one. As you can see, it's got some pastel shades. We've got blue, green, purple, pink, whatnot. It's supposed to color correct. You can just use the puff that it comes with or you can use a big fluffy brush. I prefer a big fluffy brush because I can control better the amount. Tap it, Woo. and just lightly dust on your face before you begin with your foundation. So especially concentrating it on the lower half of the face because this is where your mask is going to sit. Now let's begin with the base makeup. I've got my foundation over here. You want to work in layers and uh, only apply foundation where you actually need. If you can skip foundation altogether, all the more you should because if you apply less things, there are less things to smudge. And what I like to do is I would take a flat brush and I will just apply it in thin layers, spread around like this. So 
So once you're done applying your base, you want to take a dry beauty blender sponge or any sort of sponge that you're using to just pat it in. Alright, so I've got some blemishes and dark eye circles that I really want to cover. So I'm using my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. This is a concealer that isn't too watery or too movie. Movie? <laughs> too shifty. This is the kind of consistency that I like. I'm just gonna apply it around my eyes like so. As per normal. Okay, so around the nose area is where, you know, that metal bit is gonna sit on and that's also where you catch the most foundation. So I wouldn't recommend you to put too much products over here since it's gonna be rubbing off anyway. So I'm just gonna highlight around here. And just the top part of the nose, like so, this portion and up. I'm not gonna do much to the rest of the bottom half of my face. Okay, so right now we are gonna set it with powder. I'm using a pressed powder, compact powder. I, I feel like using a compact powder is the most oil or mattifying kind of technique to use and I am also using the sponge that it comes with. What I'm doing is I'm just pressing and baking it. Especially around the nose area, this area, and your cheeks area. This is also where it starts to flick off. Don't worry, we'll dust it all off later. So now let's move on to our brows and our eyes. I'm using a brow volumizer. This one is from Etude House. Then taking my IT Cosmetics Brow Power. I'm gonna fill in the gaps. So what I did was take my Clinique Mascara, clean off all of the excess mascara, you want to be extremely uh, clean with this, then just apply it to the front of my eyebrows for that feathered brow look. And now it's time for me to dust off my bake. So your face should be nicely matte at this point. Now let's move on to the eyes. I'm gonna do a really simple eye look but I want it to be really nice and alluring because when we wear a mask, our eyes are the only ones that are showing. In fact, it's only this portion so our brows and our eyes are very important. I'm using my Etude Chili Moon um, eyeshadow palette. I intend to use a reddish pinkish color um, lipstick later on so this is the eyeshadow palette that I'm gonna be using. Dust the whole base with this color over here. And I've got eyelash extensions on so I kind of cheated a little bit but you guys can definitely add lashes or pump up the mascara if you need. And then I'm gonna go in with this shade over here which is a slightly more darker mauve shade. I'm gonna mix it a little bit with the brown. And this one, I'm just gonna contour my eyelids with it. Also taking this white shade over here, I'm gonna apply it in the center of my eyelids to make some space for my glitter. Next up, I'm gonna take this glitter over here using my fingers and I'm just gonna pop it right on the eyelid. It's extremely shimmery. Okay, so now we are almost more or less done with the eyes. It's just left with the eyeliner. For eyeliner, I have been loving, loving my Kate Tokyo Manga Genie Liner. This one comes together with an Agio style kind of product. It also comes with a liner. Um, the texture of this liner is very interesting. It's kind of like in between a gel as well as a powder. You get the softness of a gel and a powder, but the same opacity as well. 
lining only the ends of my eyes once again because I already have eyelash extensions so if you guys don't have then you can line your eyes as per normal and because I want my eyes to be a little bit brighter I'm kind of winging it upwards a little bit and pulling it out Not forgetting drawing the Aegyo style. For me, it's extremely important. You know, it's really up to you and what you like. You can skip this step, it's kind of optional. And now it's time for contour. Personally for me, I always like to contour my forehead over here. And since this part is not going to be covered by the mask, I'm just going to go in as per normal, like how I usually would contour. And today I'm using my Charlotte Tilbury Filmstar Bronze and Glow palette. I'm just taking the scalp, doing the same as I normally would for the top part of my face. So for the bottom part of my face, I'm going to be doing something really, I guess, interesting. I realized that using a brow product actually makes your contour look really natural but it also lasts very long. So for this, I'm going to be using my brow pencil from It Cosmetics to be contouring my nose. And what I'm doing is first drawing some lines, like how I normally would with my contour stick. So same thing, I'm just drawing it out like this. Then I'm using a beauty blender to just pat it in. There we go. It's pretty natural, right? <laughs> so same thing. I know it's gonna be a bit tedious, but if you really wanna contour the sides of your face, you can just go in with strokes like this. It's a bit harder to blend because the formula is a lot more dry but it also means that it's gonna not budge when you have the mask on top of it. Now time for the cheeks as well as the lips. I personally like to use a lipstick for the cheek colour because I find that the colours last a lot longer. Choose a velvet or a liquid matte lipstick because these lipsticks will tend to not have any shine to them. They're more matte and they last longer on the face and therefore wouldn't transfer onto your mask. So right now I'm using the Etude Rose Wine Collection. This one is in PK014 Better Lip Stock Velvet. Applying it at the back of my hand. <laughs> Beauty blender, make sure it's dry. Try to put it like closer to your eyes, like to the part where your mask wouldn't touch it. At least even if it rubs off at the bottom, you still have the top. So you guys can see, even after I put on my mask, there's still a little bit of blush that peeks through. Now let's move on to the lips. I think it's the most like important part which most people are a little bit concerned about. Number one, if you like to use lip balm, you can use it but please make sure to remove it completely before you apply lipstick because it's gonna make it transfer if you don't remove it properly. So what I like to do is first apply lip balm before I go to bed and then wake up in the morning, make sure I shower and everything, remove all of the lip balm and my lips will be slightly more smooth. Let's go in with a lip tint. You can choose between between a matte liquid lipstick or a velvet matte lipstick, the one that I used just now works fine too, but the velvet one does still transfer, just not a lot. If you really want something that completely does not transfer, go for a lip tint. And this one is the new Etude Sum Sum Collection, the Jelly Mousse Tint in PK002 Berry Bear. It's extremely cute because this is a jelly mousse tint. If you have that kind of like liquid tint, like the Dear Darling Tint, that one works really well as well. What I'll do is I'll first apply on my lips. I apply a little bit more because I intend to remove it later so leave it to set for 5 to 10 minutes before you remove it with a piece of dry tissue. So now I'm just gonna leave this on for a while and I'll come back later. So now I'm just gonna take a piece of dry tissue, clean one, to just gently dab off my lip colour. Do it 
a couple of times until you don't see any lipstick coming off. So, and there you have it! This is the final makeup look. Um, I'm just gonna wear my mask and show you guys that it does not transfer. My makeup is still pretty much intact on my face. Hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to like share and subscribe talk to me in the comments box down below and i would love to hear what are some of the tips you have to share with everyone in the description box below i hope to see you soon in my next one